I will introduce is uh, using 3D WebGIS to support the disaster simulation management and analysis examples of tsunami and flood. The author of this paper is Professor Hong and I. We come from the Department of Geomatics in National Chengdu University in Taiwan. In my presentation, it has six sessions. Is, uh, that is introduction, methodology, implementation, test analysis, and we have the conclusion in final. In first section, we will introduce some background of this paper. In this page, we will use two examples to introduce the tsunami and flood disaster. The first example is the heavy rainfall in Japan in 2020 summer. The second example is the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami. Because tsunami didn't strike Ishinomaki in the last 100 years, a bridge with a height of 6 meters above mean sea level was chosen as the shelter of students. And finally, this decision eventually caused 74 deaths of students. From these two examples, we can find that the high information plays an important role in tsunami and flood disaster. So an optimal evacuation model must consider the high information to locate safe place for evacuation. In this page, we will talk about the 3DGIS. Many 3DGIS applications nowadays are restricted to visualization purpose only because of lack of the formalized and comprehensive mechanism for the management and analysis of future-based 3D geography data. So the integration of 3D geospatial data and cross-domain information provides a comprehensive basis of future-based data framework. And as the cost of creating 3D data is often expensive, the development of 3D SDI is necessary to facilitate the successful sharing and use of cross-domain 3D GIS data. And the, ma the major measure of decision support system based on GIS is its cap capability to spatial analyze the given situation in and evaluate different alternatives. The purpose system is designed as a decision support system that allows users to import real or simulated disaster scenarios and automatically respond with the visualized damage assessment information. In this session, we will talk about the methodology. The first we will talk about is the hierarchy of 3D building modeling. In order to provide a feasible operation module to meet the various demands of simulated scenarios, we designed a multi level hierarchical framework of 3D building units such that the management analysis and visualization can be subject to the chosen level like building, story, and household. And in this purpose, to ensure the correct linking between different levels of 3D building units, every building unit is assigned a unique identifier. In this page, we will talk about identifier and linkings to domain data. Like the left side picture in this page, various domains of data are designed and linked by common identifier. The 3D building framework survives as the core of 3D data with necessary geometry and essential attribute information. The, identi the identifier information is used to link to other available sources of data or domain data. And if the linking relationship can be created by common identifiers or the mapping of domain specific identifier, the scope of, an of analysis can be flexibly expand without any limitation. And we have four components in smart decision support. The first component is to allow the decision makers to design customized scenarios for disaster analysis. And the second component is about the visualization of 3D data. And the third component is the variety of disaster loss analysis and visualization. And the final components is to provide decision makers a clear and objective reference for 
evaluating the trace from tsunami and floor disasters. In section 3, we will talk about the implementation. The test site in this purpose is the Wujie Township in Ilan County. It's one of areas in Taiwan that receives the high impact in the simulated tsunami potential analysis by the National Science and Technology Center for Disaster Reduction in Taiwan. The health of the area in Wujie Township has the tsunami flooding potential and the flood depths of one quarter of the area will reach one meter. In this page, we will talk about the data preprocessing. In this purpose, four types of geospatial data and two types of non-geospatial data are used. And as told as the in section two, identifiers are used to link hierarchy 3D building, disaster potential, in infrastructure and population data in our purpose. And here, infrastructure data is used for showing the building is used for shelters, school, nursing home, or not. Section 4, we will talk about the text analysis. First, we will talk about the system operational mechanism. At first, the decision makers can select course domain data they wish to link for data preprocessing. Then decision makers can simulate disaster scenarios by specific disaster parameters like floating deals. And then based on the specific scenarios, the systems can automatically generate the disaster assessment outcomes. Then the systems will calculate and analyze the disaster rules index such as the trap population and affect buildings, stories, and households. An outcome can represent on the 3D building frameworks for the decision makers to make decisions. And finally, the purpose systems can be streamed on web 3 djs platform. There are total five cases in our purpose. The case one is the analysis and real representation of 3D overflowing. Like the right side picture in this page, the 3D representation provides a more realistic and alternative representation for assessing the impacts of floor than the 2D. And after analysis, Buildings, stories, or households which is impacted by the tsunami or force are represented with red color to indicate their emergency states, like the left side picture in this page. The case two is the feasible disaster index. We design the user customized index of disaster loss of population and damage of properties in these systems. And like the picture in this page, total 18 index and 5 charts are designed and grouped into 3 categories. And the high risk query index can be used to highlight those building stories or household whose number of high variability population exceeds the threshold values to make spatial evacuation decisions. And the case 3 is about the multidimensional visualization with different applications and level of hierarchy. There are two examples to show the flexible visualizations of the purpose systems according to the chosen applications and level of building units. The example, the example one is about simulating the overflowing situation and predict the rules at different times during the tsunami strikes. Unlike other disasters, time factor plays an important role in tsunami di disasters. 
And example two is about the visualization according to the quantitative measure of chosen topics. Like the raw picture in this page, two buildings have different maximum capacity for evacuation. The dark color represents the higher capacity of the building and the lighter color for lower capacity. The case 4 is the decision making of a available evacuation place. These systems can present the evacuation capacity in both the level of building and story. So deci decision makers can select the appropriate levels for making the evacuation decisions. For example, the building level can be used for regional evacuation and story level can be used for more precise arrangement of vertical evacuation. The final case is the evacuation simulation. There are two different concepts in the purpose framework of evacuation. One is the people concept and using network analysis to determine the shelter and evacuation routines with minimal working times according to the current location of people. And the other concept is based on shelter using the concept of service area to analyze. In the final section, we will talk about the conclusion in this paper. Many 3D GIS applications nowadays are still restricted to visualization purpose. By proposing a web-based 3D GIS system, we demonstrate how the disaster management can be improved by additionally considering the 3D characteristic for the trace for, of tsunami and flood disasters. So we have the three major contributions in this paper. First is the hierarchy 3D building framework. This framework can provide a consistent geospatial reference for modeling various levels of building units and enable simulation, analysis, and visualization of disaster impacts according the levels of building units chosen. The second is identifier system across domain data. We decide the common identifier system for domain data linkage and exchange to facilitate the development of 3D SDI. And the final component is the integration of web technology and 3D GIS. Decision makers can design, analyzes, scenarios and alternatively impacts the analysis outcomes for assessing the damage and making evacuation decisions. And this page shows all of the referencing reference we use in this paper. And this is my presentation. Thanks for your listening.